During this step, you will think about options for the future of the area of land in question. This is when discussions with local actors are essential. How do they see the future? Which crop or land use should be prioritised going forward? How is agricultural development to be balanced with forest and natural ecosystem protection? People will likely have different views and priorities. The land use planner can capture these views in different scenarios. The choice of scenarios should reflect the stakeholders' priorities, and the scenarios, once developed, are not fixed. You can always revisit and adjust them as the discussions progress. As the facilitator, you may, depending on your understanding of the local context, prepare some of these scenarios in advance. You should be prepared to revise them after listening to the needs expressed by different stakeholders during an open dialogue. The first scenario that we see here is the default scenario in our Blue River Basin example. It's just a starting point. Looking at the visual representation of the scenario, we see that it projects into the future the initial land uses that you entered in step two, taking into account population growth and the changing productivity of perennial crops as they mature. Here, we observe a decrease in forest cover, shown in green, and an increase in agricultural areas in yellow, orange and red. This is because the population is growing at the rate of 2.5% that we entered at step two. If we want, we can modify the population growth rate here. Alternatively, we could create an additional scenario to compare the effects of different rates of population growth on land use. On the left, you can see the list of land uses that you described in the previous step. The downward and upward arrows indicate a decrease or increase in agricultural production or in forest carbon stocks over the whole duration of your simulation. Now, let me draw your attention to an important detail. Here, in dark blue, you can see new areas of fallow land that appear over time. This fallow land is created by shifting cultivation. This is the case with our rice crop. You should refer to the Land Use Planner Manual for more information on the creation of fallow land and the effects of population growth. If you leave this default scenario as it is, it will serve as a no-action scenario that shows what would happen if no land use policy was implemented. However, this vision for the future may not be sustainable or may not satisfy local actors. To support the discussion of other options for the future, you can create one or more alternative scenarios. To do so, you should take into account the stakeholders' views regarding land use on the territory in question. In our Blue River Basin example, the local community is divided over the arrival of a foreign investor aiming to develop oil palm plantations. So we could propose to develop at least two alternative scenarios. One that gives priority to large-scale development of the palm oil sector, and another favouring traditional food production systems, smallholder farmers and forest conservation. To create a new scenario from the default scenario, click on Add Scenario. In this window, you will enter a name for this second scenario. Choose a name that will be clear to everyone. In our example, we would call our pro-oil palm scenario a future with oil palm. You then give an indication of the costs, for example, moderate, and benefits, let's say very high, related to the implementation of such a scenario, which may require more effort than the default scenario. You can also write a short description of the scenario that will be handy at the end of the simulation. The economic actors wish to invest in the expansion of oil palm crop, etc. To develop this oil palm scenario, you should turn to the interested stakeholders and ask questions such as, what are your plans for expanding oil palm plantations? How much land would the investor use? When would that happen? The oil palm expansion would use 15,000 hectares in total, starting in 2025. With this minimum information, you can start developing your scenario. You click on the scenario in the column 2025 and look for the oil palm in the list of land uses. Here, we are in 2025. For each land use, you can take three types of action, improve, expand, or replace. Here, for oil palm, we were talking about expanding production, so we click here. We then select the year when this expansion should be completed, for example 2040. Developing 15,000 hectares of oil palm takes time. 
Here we add our 15,000 hectares to what we had already, so this adds up to 25,640 hectares. And now the tricky question, which other land uses will this oil palm development replace? The land use planner proposes three deployment strategies, depending on whether the priority will be to conserve forests or agricultural areas. But you can also customise your expansion strategy by clicking on Custom. We can choose, for example, to remove 9,000 hectares from forests, for instance, 4,000 from community forest, 3,000 from forest concession and 2,000 from unallocated forest, and 6,000 hectares from rice fields. But would the community accept that? If you have the right people around the table, this is exactly where, with a land use planner, you can expect very interesting discussions. The different stakeholder groups will become increasingly aware of the implications of different land use choices. People may not find common ground at this stage. You can propose to take into account other views in a third, alternative scenario, and to continue the discussions and refine the scenarios after seeing the initial results. Clicking on Save, we now see the modified scenario, with the expansion of oil palm mainly at the expense of forest cover. We could introduce other interventions in this scenario, but for this demonstration, let's not complicate things. Instead, we will create our third scenario, which gives priority to another sector, smallholder rice cultivation. For example, costs moderate and benefits high, scenario description, smallholder rice cultivation system. As before, we click on the year when we start to intervene, take 2021 for instance, and go to the rice. Here, local actors and development partners tell us they want to double productivity. We click on improve and introduce a doubling of the yields by 2030. Change in yield, 100%. Change in costs, for example, 20%. Change in labour, for example, 20%. Tree density remains 10. and so forth. As a facilitator, you can propose to introduce multiple interventions in a specific scenario. You can also propose to reflect on a consensus scenario, such as the one displayed here. At the end of these discussions, everyone will be able to compare the results of the different scenarios and engage in the most informed discussions possible.